Hello there everybody, it is me Feaser Bunny, and welcome back to Hogwarts. So today we're working on the hospital wing and the clock tower courtyard. Now this section of the castle is mostly seen in the third and the fourth film. We don't really get to see much of it in the later films, but I was really excited to do this just because the third and the fourth films are actually some of my favorites, and I thought it was a really fun little challenge to try to do the clock tower because it is such a prominent feature in those films and I really really wanted to challenge myself to try to make it as accurately as I can to the films and I'm really really happy with the end result so as you guys can see as per usual we're starting here in Newcrest crafting stuff and here I'm trying to figure out how to execute the clock face, the very famous clock face that we see quite a lot of in the Prisoner of Azkaban film. And I figured out that I can use these wooden pieces from Cottage Living in tandem with that one large round window from Realm of Magic and they look really good together. I actually was really inspired by this little trick that I ended up doing a build, um, a completely different build that was inspired by this one. It was the Clock Tower Loft Apartment build that I did a couple of months ago. And I actually did this first. And as soon as I did this, I felt so inspired that I ended up doing another build. I ended up doing the Clock Tower Loft Apartment build that I put out a couple of months ago. The clock face that I did in that apartment though was more detailed because I had more time to work with it and also I figured that for Hogwarts I didn't need to make such a detailed clock face because there was already a lot of detail in Hogwarts anyway and at this point I was really starting to feel my game lag and we are barely even halfway done with the castle at this point so anything i can do to optimize the build itself is definitely a plus in my opinion but we are also going to be crafting some extra details here we are working on some trust details which you aren't really going to see much of unless you are the type of person who plays in first person um, not me, I'm afraid, but I really, really love this detail. I was able to see some reference images, not necessarily from the movies, but from one of the Harry Potter games. I think it was the um, Order of the Phoenix game that had some events take place inside of the clock tower, so I was able to use that as reference. And the inside of it looked pretty run down, like it was a less maintained section of Hogwarts. So I was going for more of like this rusted look for all of the wood that I used in that section of Hogwarts. So you guys see that later on as we move forward into the build. And the last thing that we're gonna be crafting in this part is actually one of my favorite things that we've crafted so far. And that would be the ruined fountain, which is a prominent feature in the clock tower courtyard I'm really really proud of how this turned out. I was able to find some items from Discovery University as well as get together with matching swatches and luckily I was able to make them look like the ruined fountain in Hogwarts. Really really happy with it. It was really really tricky to get the look just right and also to get the proportions right because it was kind of like this gothic kind of like arch type thing and obviously we don't have any of that in the game so i had to craft my own but i'm really really happy with how this turned out and yeah as you can see a lot of the crafting work that i'm doing requires a lot of precision which is why i prefer to actually do the crafting in newcrest because the grid is straight as opposed to the lot that we chose in winterberg where the grid is on a slight angle. It's a very, very slight angle, but for the sake of precision, I do like to work here in Newcrest. And yeah, this is the 
ruined fountain as you can see i will be adding gargoyles in a second and i also really loved that one ruins bit towards the side as well and now we are back to the main part of the speed build which is actually working on the castle itself now as you may notice that i did leave quite a lot of the exterior bare like with very little detail and almost no windows and that is mainly because i like to work on the exterior as i'm working on the interior so that I could work on them in tandem and that it all flows cohesively to form a coherent build and that was really really important for this because it's such a massive and complicated build that I just really had to take my time and plan ahead and also because of the way the interiors are in Hogwarts I wanted to give myself a little bit of kind of like breathing room I guess to be able to change stuff you know on the exterior if I absolutely needed to which is why I do try to um, do the window placement last because I don't want to have to overly decorate the exterior only to change it when I want to do something on the inside if that makes any sense but as you can see we are now plopping in some of the items that we prefabricated as I mentioned earlier, those trusses aren't really going to be visible in regular gameplay, but I like having them for the sake of screenshots and also for realism purposes because realistically, that roof would be supported by beams. So I wanted to include a little bit of that in this build as well. But we do see quite a bit of this section of Hogwarts in the third film, especially the part where Harry and Hermione are time traveling. And it's quite fun because there are some really, really interesting moments that happen here. And I really, really enjoyed that section of the third film. I did see all of the Harry Potter films in theaters. And I also played all of the Harry Potter games up until the fifth game. So I'm pretty familiar with how the aesthetic of Hogwarts look. And I really, really tried my best to capture that vibe even though it's not 100 perfect but as i mentioned earlier i did go for kind of like a more rustic vibe for this section of hogwarts actually i think rustic isn't the right word to describe it maybe rusted or like um abandoned even i don't know it just looked really run down to me from the reference images and from the little that I saw on the movies but I you know did my best to capture that vibe and yeah really really happy with it there is a lot of space in this section of Hogwarts that is unfortunately wasted space in my opinion but that's how it is in the movies and I did tell you guys earlier when I started the series that I was going for movie accuracy more than anything else so that's what we're going with Actually, now that I brought up the video games, I'm actually curious to know if you guys have played any of the Harry Potter games and if you guys have any particular favorites. Because I think you guys already know what I'm going to say my favorite game is. Um, yes, it is the Prisoner of Azkaban game. First and foremost, because I love the movies, but also because I just love the aspect of that game that lets you explore Hogwarts. And keep in mind, this was way before open world was a thing. Back then, there was no such thing as open world, but we did have games that enabled us to explore different areas, and those are called free roam. Anyone else remember that term? But yeah, you were able to free roam Hogwarts while riding a hippogriff, and it was the most amazing thing. I spent hours and hours just riding Buckbeak and flying around Hogwarts, flying around the Black Lake. And it was just an absolutely amazing time. I felt so immersed as well. Just doing that simple thing. I feel like that was like a mini game in that game. But I just absolutely enjoyed it. And that was definitely the highlight of the third game in my opinion and i'm so excited that it looks like we're gonna be able to do some of that in hogwarts legacy which is another game that i'm really excited about but yeah we're now working on kind of like this clock mechanism we do see it in the movies 
Unfortunately, I know nothing about how clocks work, so I did try my best to make this look like it makes sense. But if it doesn't, we can always just say that it is powered by magic. But I did try my best to use those gears, and these are actually from high school years. And when I did this, high school years just came out, so I was really, really happy that we had those, and I was extra happy to find out that you can actually rotate them using the tool mod, because oftentimes debug items can't be manipulated with the tool mod, so I was really, really happy that I was able to place them how I wanted them to. And here, I'm just trying to add a counterweight to this giant pendulum. I have no idea how it works, but I did try my best to make it look like it made sense. So here I am using some items from Journey to But 2. I think that counterweight thing is from Get Together. And I also used one of those water mills that came with Cottage Living. That actually spins around and you probably already saw a little bit of it in the trailer that I released. Was it a month ago already? Uh, yeah, I think it was a month ago. But I actually have a really interesting story I want to share with you guys. So I have recently started playing The Sims once again because one of my best friends actually got The Sims 4 because if you didn't know, The Sims 4 is available for free. Um, yeah, these videos are pre-recorded so I'm not sure when you're exactly going to see this but I have recently started playing the game and I have recently gotten into scenarios. My friend actually gotten me into scenarios because I wasn't interested at first but scenarios can actually be played retroactively to your previous saves and when I found that out I was like okay you know what some of these might work with some of my previous saves so I was like you know I have a farming mm -hmm. gameplay thing that I would really, really love to um, go back to and ended up playing scenarios and I got myself a money tree. So I'm just waiting for that money tree to grow and hopefully earn some simoleons and do the whole earn 1 million simoleon um, scenario thingy. So that was pretty cool. But anyway, here we're now working on the infirmary and unfortunately i wasn't able to make it look like it does in the movies because this is actually one of the rooms it's one of the few rooms that we have a lot of resources to look at because apparently the students at hogwarts spend a lot of time in the infirmary i find that quite concerning but yeah we do have quite a lot of references for the infirmary and unfortunately i didn't have the space to execute it as it looks in the movie so i did try to kind of make a downsized version of it so i wanted to include at least one bed as well as a desk for the nurse or madame pomfrey because she does have a desk i think it's on the other side of the infirmary though like near the main entrance but you know i just had to play around with the layout a little bit oh and right now we're working on the clock tower courtyard which fun fact this courtyard actually predates the more famous viaduct courtyard by one film which is pretty interesting because the viaduct courtyard was only added in the fourth film but we do see this section of hogwarts quite a lot in the third film and actually you guys can see that i threw in a little ruined bridge over there where the wooden bridge is supposed to be i think that's going to be a placeholder haven't fully decided it yet but i might do like a proper looking wooden bridge but for now let's just pretend like it's a destroyed version maybe it's the one that Seamus blew up in the eighth film but yeah here i'm just adding in more foliage to this courtyard and i absolutely love it because of the amount of foliage I think it just made this place look really romantic and yeah there we have the ruined fountain that we crafted earlier and it fits in perfectly in my opinion. The only thing is that I wish I had more space to work with because it does look a little bit cramped in here but actually it looks like that is going to be it for this build. As always, I hope you guys enjoyed it and I just want to take a second to thank you all so much. I really, really appreciate all of your feedback, so please keep them coming. I look forward to reading all of your comments every week and I'm really, really happy to see that you guys are enjoying this series so far. But with that said, I just want to thank you all so much for watching. Once again, you all have an awesome, awesome, awesome day 
enjoy the rest of the video, and I will see you guys next time. Bye bye. Thank you.